Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherall. I'm a fourth generation witch with Irish blood, so I'm covering all bases here. Today's video is part of my Almanac series looking at witchcraft in the month of December. Now of course December is all about Christmas, or as we witches like to call it Yule, which I don't call it Yule, I call it Christmas because it makes my heart sing a bit more. Christmas and Yule are pretty much interchangeable, always have been, always were. So this video is going to look at the daily witchcraft that you can do throughout the month of December and which days pertain to which particular spells. So I'm going to run through the relevant dates of the month and give you any spells that you may need to do on those days. This is part of my ongoing Almanac series and I'll put the link to the Almanac series up in the description here so you can look at the rest of them because although they might be pertaining to July, you could still use those ideas as part of a ritual, traditional witch daily craft. December is the month of change and for a month that signifies birth and renewal, which it does with the rebirth of the sun on the 21st, which is the winter solstice. This is when the sun changes its course and begins a descent out of the darkness and into the light. So we're coming in to the beginning of the months of light. Now, there is an awful sense of calmness in the air in December. Our mammals are mainly slumbering in their burrows. The leaves have fallen from the trees. Snow might be falling on the ground in December. The birth of the new sun. It's a very quiet affair. It was marked in old by flame and fire. So we have the Yule log, which we will bring indoors and decorate with holly and greenery and pour libations of cider and wine over to be burnt in the hearth, lit from the previous lights of flame, meaning the fire before the winter solstice. Now we only really remember in cake form where it's made of chocolate. Of course, Christmas is all about feasting, family, food, wine. It tends to be, and very much so, an indoor festival. It's only with singing round the trees in the ancient times before we bought the trees inside, and hence we have a Christmas tree and still stand and sing round them. That's very, very pagan. Love it. And I do that every year. Get my children. I'm on the piano. They're singing. They're much better singing at me, and I'm much better playing piano than them, so it works well. The 30th of November is the day that the moon is full and it comes to fullness at, I think it's 10 o'clock in the evening or something, but it remains at full capacity in the morning on the 1st of December. And this is interesting because as the moon wanes towards the winter solstice, this brings the first two weeks of December to become a time of reflection and contemplation. It is not the most propitious time to start any new project, but you should plan them now and this will come to fruition within the next six months to a year. Plans that you make in a propitious time frame tend to take a while to come good. This is, can be the foundation for the next six months because if you formalise your plans on the night of the new moon, having thought about them and contemplated them for the last couple of weeks, and that night is the 15th of December, the planning phase can reach its fruition with the night when the moon arises in Sagittarius on the 15th of December. So Sagittarius moons help you become visionary, you know, you can see the big picture. This is why this planning and contemplation and reflection stage at the first couple of weeks of the month is so important. You cannot see the future unless you look at the past. So it's very important to contemplate, reflect and consider what you want next six months or so and put that into place now. These will all come good by the 26th of May 2021 which is when Sagittarius is in the full moon. So the winter solstice or Yule happens on the 21st of December this year. It is a movable feast because it's done by the Gregorian calendar which is slightly off. 
so therefore it moves slightly. However, I'm not going to talk too much about Yule because Yule is so interchangeable with Christmas and the traditions we have at Christmas are pretty much directly taken from Yule. So the bringing in of the Christmas tree and decorating it, singing, the wassailing, the Yule log. And it is the day of the year that you celebrate with your family and was well known for the giving and receiving of gifts. So Christmas, pff, apart from adding in uh, some church services, <laughs> the Christian religion is exactly the same. The arrival of the 21st of December is a really exciting time for me because it marks the arrival of the moon into Capricorn. Woo and as you may or may not have ever noticed, I wear a lovely goat around my neck, which is very beautiful and very goat-like and symbolises my Capricorn status because I like to climb to the top of the mountain, sure-footed and slowly ascend to the top, apparently. And anyway, I do that. I do plug away at things. You know, let's get there. So this is my time of year. It is when I am at my strongest in a way because I'm celebrating my birth and all those aspects of your birth come back and help you in the month around the date you were born. I'm not so sure myself if that actually works. I find that with witchery, you're pretty much as strong around your birthday as you are of any other day of the year. Capricorns are said to be old when they're young and to lessen and become more playful and youthful as they grow older. I think that's probably certainly true of me. I was quite a serious child. I was quite depressed by the state of the world and, you know, politics and other things that I thought we'd never, ever get over. And now I take a much more, oh well, view, apart from, you know, obviously you have to do your bit, but if I can't change it, I'm not gonna worry about it. My favorite aspect is that I plug away at things, probably slightly too rigidly for other people's ideas, but I like the fact that I'm a striver. Well, it's terribly Capricorn than that. I mean, do let me know in the comments below what you think your greatest star sign trait is. I'd be really interested. And maybe we could do a video on the best traits of the star signs and how to use them as a witch. Now, what with all the feasting and the fun and the games and the love that we're all going to do this COVID Christmas, I wanted to give you a small spell for a clove studded orange or pomander. Now, this was a very traditional gift that children would take clove studded oranges and apples, give them to their neighbours. And these would be embedded on green leaves, showing the new life that was going to come forth. And the oranges and apples being globular would be round and considered like the sun. So with these oranges and apples, I'm going to make them into a gift of hope for you to give to your friends, to your family, to your grandparents, to whoever needs it. Now the ingredients are very simple. You'll need a fresh, firm skinned orange. We're secondly going to use a lot of clothes with antibacterial and drying properties to help with the preserving of the orange. And lastly, we need some ribbon. Thread the ribbon in a cross shape, tight as you can around the orange and tie. Then taking your clothes, stick them into the exposed flesh of the orange, trying to cover as much as possible. These clove stuck oranges were known as pomanders and were used by anyone from the Elizabethans onwards to clean the air around them. This is not as mad as it seems, as cloves have one of the highest antibacterial properties, one of the reasons that we are using them in this orange. Hang the orange in a warm, dry place where it will shrink down and turn into a dry pomander with the most heavenly smell. So what is witchy about a pomander? Well, it is the love that you put into the pomander as you're making it, and the care and the joy and the happiness that makes it a prosperity charm. As a gift, you want to give your light and love to other people, and that's a rather sweet, fairly cheap way of doing it. So the 30th of December, is the full moon and this being the first full moon of the ascending sun is a great time to make moon water obviously the easiest way to make moon water take a bowl put in some spring water put the water on a windowsill where the moon can shed its light upon it or if you have that possibility outside direct in the moonlight ask the moon to bring down her blessings upon this bowl of water 
and leave it there till the morning. Et voila, you have moon water. I mean, there are all sorts of things you can do with moon water. And in fact, any spell that requires a drop of water is normally, for me, using moon water. So 30th of December is the day to make your moon water. Hopefully that moon water will last you through the month. I think actually this is my first almanac video that I haven't shown you a spell where I'm using moon water. I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that, so don't quote me. But I think so. Anyway, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite aspect of December is, because I'd love to know. I'll see you in my next video.